Well, this this whole discussion brings to mind two cases that I worked on last year um, that were brought to us by a broker, and I would say a more a sophisticated broker, somebody who knew that they're that they were always looking for other other options and how can they optimize everything for their client. And both of these, actually, interestingly enough, were in group captives, two different brokers on two different sides of the country. Um, one was in staffing, one was in home health care. The home health care, they started when their premiums were about $500,000 for their comp. And their business had grown through COVID, through acquisitions, other things, to the point where they were paying just for their workers' comp alone a couple million dollars in premium. So they were on the larger end of their group captive. Well, we went through, we did an analysis and figured out that they could actually use the same fronting carrier and the cost for the internal cost for the insurance was going to be less and the the claims administration was going to be less. So they kept a certain amount of retention, which was the same as they were keeping in the group captive and their aggregate stop loss was actually less. Um, So that worked out great. And then that's one where we were able to, they had one specific, just the workers comp, but they were able to actually use that. And we were able to get the general liability and some of the other policies. So what was just a small level of commission ended up being in the 450 to $500,000 range is what the the brokerage commissions ended up paying. The other case was a group captive for workers comp and they also were they were the largest participant in the group captive. And what happened is we they found out or we we did an analysis and the broker was astute and realized that the client because of the structure of the group captive they were actually paying a significant amount out to cover other people's claims, not theirs. So that's where he, they brought it and said, you know, can you analyze this and see if there's a different solution, if there's a better way to do this? And we went back and again, used the same exact carrier and the carrier didn't want to see him go because their loss ratio for workers comp was in the, depending on the year, seven to 15% range but they were paying out more like 35, 40% in claims because they were supplementing the claims of uh, the other people in the program. So we ended up getting the workers comp, did a single parent captive. We actually lowered the retention on a specific amount, kept the aggregate at the same that it was before, but the broker again this wasn't in both of these cases it was an unintended consequence of because they did such a good job on that coverage the the client said oh well let's let's have you look at the other coverage and they didn't they didn't put those coverages in this example in the captive they kept those in the traditional market but that again ended up giving increased commission to the broker, and it showed that they were doing a much better job uh, for their client.